What came before me? Like, um, before me there was a lot, but, but, but as in me, before Oka, I had a few tags. Um, I probably wrote Oka from 91, 92, and really started graffiti in like 1989, 1990, um, which was a very busy time for the bumpkin, you know, for the for the bumpkin graffiti scene and the, the Kent graffiti scene, call it what you want, like, uh, it's very, it's, it's, I'm surprised Scorn never documented it, to tell you the truth, but it's very, um, you know, it's very, very busy, but very badly documented, um, the BRs were like, the insides were, you, you couldn't get on the front, there was always never space in the joiners, there was never space on the fronts, it, it was a very busy scene, like, um, Score and Dome basically had every train when I started, um, Petra had a lot of, well, sorry, Hash, um, what he, was what he used to write, he, uh, he had a lot, and, uh, so did Stormer, his partner, thinking back, uh, Cast, there was these other kids from Margate, um, it's very, uh, uh, Ammo, Ammo from Canterbury, there's a lot of these writers that were very prolific, and a lot of them actually wrote in London, but from where I was from, like, I didn't really care about any of, any of it, other than what I saw in my area, and, uh, what was happening in basically Tunbridge and parts of Kent. I used to go to Bromley a bit. That's where I met, um, that's where I met Soggy. That's where I met Coat. That's where I met Regret, in fact. And, um, it used to be quite a good scene. Uh, Carl was from there, rest in peace. And, um, it was a busy, busy scene. You used to have Alkent and lay up. And really, that's what sort of stopped me going further into London back then, because from where I lived, I could go Tunbridge, I could go Red Hill, I could go Sevenoaks, I could go Oxted, I could go East Grinstead, and that's just within 15 minutes of my fucking house. I really wasn't interested in anything than, other than doing it with my friends, and, you know, going to Tunbridge, this was like, and we used to go to this pub called the Star and Garter, and buy acid. Um, and that's where I met Enemy. Enemy's, oh, Cute was from there as well, but Enemy, that's where I met Enemy, and, uh, he basically, he was the first person to show me Tunbridge, he was the first person to take me there. Um, he was the first person I got arrested with as well, I think. Him, Soggy, and Carl, again, yeah, rest in peace. Soggy was writing, after he wrote NASA, in fact, he just started writing Soggy, like, that, that week or something, you know, it was like real, that was really his new tag, just before he went off and like did the IBS thing with all that lot, um, so yeah, it was a vibe, very, very busy, we used to have like writers meetings in different parts of Kent and there'd be like a lot of people, you know, different jams, you go to Alpington on a Sunday and there'd be all these other writers like Excess, who wrote Deckmaster before that, but he was Sparks' his brother, and Sparks used to hang out with Haste, and these were all like, pretty big South London bus bombers really, and uh, they're the people that I sort of first knew in the graffiti scene. Um, but I was really just doing insides, and you'd go yards every, every, you know, now and again, not very often. Um, I suppose, I think it was like 1989, you'd have to ask Score, but like, he saw my first, my first top to bottom running, in a, obviously not in Oka, but in a different name, that was, um, that, that made me buzz, you know, it was like Score had heard of me, as it were, you know, and, um, yeah, he was like the king, he was fucking out every train, he was, you know, the main man, and like, one of his partners was a guy named Boss, Boss 22, um, and he lived in my area, and I, and I knew him, and, you know, these were my, my early influences, they were the only people that I, I gave a shit about, I didn't really, uh, care about a load of people in even another county, let alone, you know, outside my vision, um, I met Score first through Enemy, but, um, 
he used to, yeah, like, he used to just avoid us, really, because he was, like, really good, and I was really shit. <laughs> like, uh, I don't think they really took us seriously to begin with. I think they just thought that we were into doing acid and wrote on things as a, you know, a byproduct of being out all night doing that kind of shit. But, um, you know, times changed, and by sort of, like I say, 91, 92, I'd started writing ochre, and that's probably when I started going into London. I used to go into London with school and that, but, I, but still, I'd still rather just go 10 minutes from my house and be able to come home, and it was just hassle doing anything else other than that. That was sort of... I used to go with my friends, you know, like people that didn't even really write, they'd come with me, and it was just an adventure, and we used to have a laugh. Uh, I never really thought about fame, never even... Like, it never entered my head. Like, I remember sitting, like, with Flo and Unit sitting on Tunbridge Station, and uh, it was 1990. Um, and we were going, fuck, in 10 years, it's going to be the year 2000, and what we'd be doing, and blah, blah, None of us thought we'd be writing. Um, and it's now 2022, and one of us is one of us is still writing kind of thing and one of us drives a train and one of us that, that drives a train now has like driven my pieces a few times and I remember bumping into we bumped into I was with Hash with Petro and we've uh, we've done this yard and um, we're outside the train station the next day and uh, yeah unit came up to us and he was like he'd driven it our piece that day and it was like it was just weird, do you know what I mean, that like people were now train drivers and like we were still still doing our thing, still, um, you know, still believing in graffiti. Um, and I think, you know, out of Kent there's been some real, real, real good writers. Out of, you know, Kent and Sussex, I think there's been some of the best, probably, or, or, or most prolific, you know, um, especially on BR, you know, Nemo. Crow, myself, Score, Ten, Dome, uh, and through these people, through Flow, in fact, that's when I found out about Hastings Yard, um, and we used to go down to Hastings and do that, and then me and Daft probably, again, maybe 1992, found a shed on the beach at St. Leonard's, and we started going there. Um, I believe we were the first people to do it. Maybe maybe we weren't. There was no other tags around it or anything. Um, but yeah, it was crazy. Like Back then you'd speak to people and it would be like, you knew all the writers. So it was like, you knew what yards were getting done and you could speak to them and be like, oh, have you been there? And they're like, yeah. And we're like, oh, we won't go there. We go here. And, you know, it was, it was a good time. Like everyone was kind of... Uh, Everyone was mad toy, really, but it was a it was quite a cool cool scene, really. To tell you the truth, like graffiti had an effect on me doing drugs and stuff in a way because uh, once I, when I was doing acid, I wasn't into, you know, I couldn't get it together to go yards really. Um, we'd go tripping, we go yards tripping sometimes, and you know it was fun, but you'd just do complete crap. So I kind of stopped doing that sort of stuff to pursue graffiti. And then, like, uh, you know, this was by 92, then by 92, 93, nobody wrote. These are like, no one in, you know, all the BR writers had sort of given up, gone on to better things, like, and um, there was just a handful of us left, like me, Score, Spike, Ein, and, you know, that's what's that's kind of where we came from, you know, like, um, I was like the youngest out of everybody, kind of looked up to a few of them, and, you know, Daft as well, Daft was part of, uh, he wrote Dino, he's done some cool stuff, he used to, um, I used to paint with him a lot, um, panels in the early, you know, in the early 90s again, um, graffiti really didn't take off again, did it, till... 96 or something, you know, like, there was a few years where there was only a few of us out there, and they were like, in a way, like, they were wasted years, we didn't do enough, but they were also like, 
it was very different. Like I'd go, I don't know. There's a there was a piece at the bottom of Lordship Lane by um, the London Giants, which is close to where my cousins lived, and you know these are things I'd just go and look at. Like and I'd go to Labrook Grove and look at the pieces there, and but I was never interested. In, I'd always go back to where we were from to do, you know, to do my graph. It was it. I just sort of like, you know. I didn't. I didn't start graffiti to make friends. I didn't start graffiti to, you know, be down with anyone. I just did it because like my babysitter showed me what it was, and I thought it was cool. And yeah, I've sort of always been like that. I've always just sort of done it. I, you know, I used to write with the goat, and these people just, you know, used to just write shit on the trains about people from our town. So when they got on the train in the morning, they'd see it. You know. Um, and, uh, it, yeah, they took not getting caught seriously, but the stuff we used to do wasn't very serious t at all. It just came along, like, in later years, once I, met, once I hooked up with Spike and then through that iron, and then Nima and Hill and blah, 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 that's when it started getting a bit more serious, but that was like, that was like mid-90s, that was like 95, 96, like, the years before that, yeah, it was just a do what the fuck you want and laugh and get the train home. Like, it's weird. There was, like, this bloke who, uh, I don't know what you'll say it, like, it's just some weird Nazi character called Charlie in the, in the town we lived, and we always used to write, my mate Pete, who's the goat's cousin, we'd write Pete for Charlie down the trains just because he was going to get on the train and, like, if he had the amp, he'd probably beat you up. He was a few years older than us, you know, like, yeah, that's the sort of crap we were on. We weren't really into, like, you know, we had probably, you know, I might have had half of Subway art or something, you know, and, like, getting up and... Other than that, we just, you know, we just learnt through doing it and didn't really sort of, you know, think about... You know, obviously, I used to look at cast and I used to look at, uh, you know, all of those old London writers... Um, and it was just always too much act to be bothered to go and go up there to do the stuff. Which kind of made me um, a complete bumpkin, I suppose. Like, uh, it's a word that I like. I've learned to love it. We even had a crew. Like, one of the meanings of BKS was bumpkins. Like, uh, we've always, like, embraced it and been proud to be it. Like, uh, you know... One of the best writers you've ever, you know, that's ever touched London, um, cast, like, they were from Middlesex, they used to cast and, uh, Myers and that lot used to write bumpkin posse on the trains because, you know, they used to be called bumpkins, it's sort of, a uh, bumpkin to me is almost like, um, someone that actually tries. Just be yourself, like, uh, be individual, not really care, like, and not, you know, be quite sort of insular, I suppose is the word, is it? You know, like, um, we had our own world, we lived in that world, and really didn't give a shit about anything outside of it. Like I say, it wasn't until the mid-90s that I bothered even leaving those areas, because everything was there for me. All the best paint shops, all the best racking, you know, like, sweet yards that no one's done since you last did it. And, um, yeah, just yeah. having a laugh. By 92, like I said, most people had given up and the scene had got a lot smaller. Um, Shooter and Sub had made DDS in probably 92, I think it was, something like that. And, uh, basically, I think, you know, I'm probably wrong, but I think it's like Sub, Shoe, Diet. Bus, probably noise. Um, I think Petro Keds, uh, Stacks. You know, the best writers were, were in that crew. Basically, that was like the crew that took that took London from ninety two to to ninety seven, really. Um, and you know, it's undeniable they did some real fucking cool shit. Like Stacks, and you know, Diet was. When he was fig, he was, like, doing some, like, really cool shit. All of that lot were. 
um, yeah, it was a cool thing to about 97, but I sort of, in my weird head, I know it's not true, but in my head it's sort of like, if you're, like, if you're in DDS after the year 2000, you're not in DDS, in my head, I know it's not true, but like, that's the way I see it, you understand what I mean, like, you know, everyone's lived off the people that are in it before that, um, like, you know, in my eyes, the best years for that crew were 92 to 97, you know, that's the way I see it, you know, like, that's, that's what I rate, that's what I like, that's, you know, that's what I've got time for, do you know what I mean, like, everything else, like, a lot, like, I suppose what it is, is all of those writers were names themselves, they didn't need, like, DDS to co-sign them and make them something, and then in later years, a lot of people, like, you wouldn't have even heard of, think that they're credible just because they write a certain crew, and, uh, in my eyes, there's no, uh, your name's bigger than any crew you're in, and if, and if it isn't, you may not be, uh, good enough to be in that crew. They started getting on the real sort of anti-bumpkin shit again, and, you know, Nemo was in DDS at that point, and, and Petro, I think they both got kicked out because they weren't from London, and, uh, I don't think it really affected any, you know, Kent or Bumpkin or anyone like, you know, we'd, uh, they never really did anything to me, so I don't really, like, you know, have an axe to grind like that, do you know what I mean? It doesn't really bother me, like, um, but at the same time, it probably changed the, the whole scene to a point, because, uh, everything was getting dogged, and, like, all the people that were good weren't necessarily doing the dogging and weren't necessarily the most active at that point. So, like, um, the, the whole style thing that Shu had probably, and Stax and Diet had put into the crew was beginning to slip. And, um, you know, I think that's, you know, that's a shame. The whole of London beginning at that point, really, it became bumpkin to try. Like, if you look like you tried to do a piece and you tried to do something good, like, that was almost considered bumpkin and, as you know, and toyish, really. Um, and I kind of fear that's how it's going to go again now with what's going on, like, people going over people, people doing this, and it's sort of like the people that are going over people, like, you know, they've been in the game a minute and think that they're like this and they think they're that, but they're actually fucking crap. And it's going to get to another point where all the people that are good at, like, you know, that have got style, they're going to lose their stuff and not be bothered to do it. And then, like, we're going to fall back again to that kind of just complete shit style. And um, and I think that's, um, you know, when I say that the good writers, not the good, there's a lot of good writers from London, you know, like Snatch, fucking whoever, like some of the other people I've already mentioned, but... Um, there was always, like, outside of London, there was always this kind of, like, I don't know, just sort of tried harder or something. Like, I wrote with people that wouldn't accept. Like, if you were going to paint the same piece as you did last week, you ain't coming. Like, as simple as that. No one wants to see the same piece 20 times. Like, and people, you, you know, you weren't coming. Simple as that. And, like, that got drummed into me. And then, like I said before, you know, I signed up for Style Wars and I signed up for, like, you know, what that represents, but graffiti's changed a lot now, like, being shit is now a style, do you know what I mean, like, like, what, what do you do with that, where, where the fuck is the world when that, you know, when it comes to that, but, you know, I think I've said it before, I don't even check for that stuff, I don't even look at it, I don't care about it, um, it's not what I do, it's sort of like, it's the difference between, you know, a fucking a fly fisherman and a boat that sits there trying to catch carp for four days. It's sort of like, you know, it's it's two different, completely different things. You know, it's the difference between fucking, you know, hip hop and grime or drill or whatever the fuck. You know, like it's all called the same shit, but it, it's very different. And like, the people that do that stuff will be offended if you said it's the same as the other. Like, I am offended when you tell me that some of these people do the same shit I do, because they don't, you know, they really fucking don't, and like, 
um, you know, I don't know how it's happened in London, but it seems to be, or even in the UK as a whole, you know, like, we kind of like, we've let it slip. So by the time that 97 came around, we were just like, uh, we were our own thing, like, um, there was like me, Iron, Hill, Nima. This is just before Dell, just before Cams, just before, you know, that all kicked off and we were we were busy. It was like fucking paces were getting thrashed, it was like week in, week out, fucking whole trains, blah 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 and it was a fucking it was a real, real busy time. Nemo was fucking killing it. Like just just fucking doing loads. You know, compared with anybody else at that point, he was the geezer. Do you know what I mean? Like, no one, you know, even from early, early, like, um, like, I remember meeting them in, I think it must have been 90, 91, maybe, 1990, 1991, something like that, in a party in Croydon, um, at Set Ones, and, uh, you know, he had a photo album then with, like, top to bottoms and all mad shit, and, it, like, he, you know, you got to give it to that geezer. He was around, you know, he was one of the earliest and he was the one that put the, you know, the battery in a lot of people's backs and also he, he, he installed in me, maybe through other people, um, but he installed in me, like, getting good photos, getting run, getting running photos, like, um, you know, the mission isn't complete until you get good photos, basically. Just doing it isn't enough. I just like always think, you know, they were, that's, that's the way to, you know, if you don't get a photo, it's sort of, you haven't done it, have you? Um, you know, they, it was Iron who made me like, um, go and buy good cameras and really, really get on it, but like, but never took it to the next fucking level. And look at his stuff, he's fucking got mad flicks of, of all of it, really. Um, or what I've seen of it is, you know, he's, uh, yeah, up until, like, you know, the end of the 90s, he was definitely a, a force to be reckoned with, and I don't think anyone was doing more than him. <laughs>